Ever wondered what it'd be like to face off against an epic MMO boss in a roguelike game? Well, Rabbit and Steel takes that concept and runs with it, delivering a unique blend of intense action and strategic gameplay. Just like your favorite raid boss. After going through the game for over 15 hours, I've encountered every boss and unlocked almost everything in the game, so let's take a look at how this game's unique take on the genre measures up to its expectations. Well, first, to truly understand what makes Rabbit and Steel stand out, we first need to explain what the game is, and from there we'll break down key components. So, Rabbit and Steel is classified as an action roguelike bullet hell that has an anime art style and all the characters are bunny girls and all the enemies are various animal girls as well oh! Ew! Ew! sure well, why not <laughs> its key selling point is that it compares itself to mmorpgs using mainly the raid boss mechanic ah! With that, we get mechanics such as global cooldowns, effectively using your skills and special attacks, properly moving around the screen using various outlines and indicators around the screen to signify where you should move to and make sure you're not in the way of enemy attacks. It's similar to what you would see in an MMO. And to understand that red is red and blue is blue, Trust me, it's harder than it sounds. Also, there aren't any normal enemies per se. There are enemies that, you know, progress through in the area, but every enemy is a boss in its own right. Some being easier, of course, but you won't have an easy fight ever. Trust me, every fight is going to challenge you one way or another. <laughs> Man, I'm dead. Now that we have a very basic understanding of what Rabbit and Steel is, let's talk about the actual key points, starting with the most basic of all. What makes Rabbit and Steel the most unique? It's gameplay. <laughs> So, like I've already discussed, Rabbit and Steel is made to feel like an MMO raid boss, with both the player's abilities, but the enemies as well. Hey, yo, what the fuck? As such, all of your skills, for the most part, share what is called a general cooldown, which basically means if you use your primary attack, you can't use any other attack or skill until that cooldown is over, which means you can't just randomly throw out moves. You need to strategically plan your attack so you don't get smacked by the boss because you can't move in the middle of your attack, which is another mechanic. <laughs> The game rewards you for playing the game quickly. You see at the end of each fight, you're rewarded money and experience based off how quickly you defeat the boss. Which makes it even harder, because you have to go fast, and the faster you go, the more rewards you get. But if you don't go fast enough, you don't get rewarded as much, and everything gets harder because you don't level up as much, and you don't get as much money, which isn't worse thing on lower difficulties, but then the game decides to throw a fun thing once you get to hard and lunatic mode, which is, well, if you take too long in a fight, the boss will just start throwing out unblockable moves that you can't do anything about to just end you. No! Please, no! 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 And there's not much you could do about it, so you gotta make sure you're ahead of the curve when it comes to both damage and planning, so you don't get stuck in these situations where you're just, well, for lack of a better word, screwed. But, you know, you have the smallest hitbox ever. It's literally the size of a pea. So it can't be that hard, right? And their hitbox is that big. It's literally huge. So surely it's not gonna be that hard to hit them. Well, nope. with how much ducking and weaving you're gonna be doing, you might be surprised. You'll still get bodied faster than you can say, Oh, but with each of its mechanics, man, does this game make for a fun gameplay loop. The fights are challenging and you have to strategically think about what you're doing and what you want to properly build throughout the entire run. Do you want to build your primary, your special, your secondary? These are all things you have to think about with every single step of the game, which makes the gameplay very engaging. And I gotta say, each fight is extremely unique. No two fights are the same. Some will tether you to them and start spinning around the entire screen, and some will just lock you down in a square so you can't move. Each fight is is unique and that makes it even more fun for gameplay it's an easy five out of five all right let's move to visuals the thing we have to deal with the most in games i mean we can't just not see the game unless you're blind but it's kind of hard to play video games like i guess it's possible with sound cues but it, yeah don't play this game if you're blind what anyways i digress the visuals are a very simplistic style you know nothing too crazy no crazy animations no you know epic explosions or michael bay directing it's very simple clean 
It doesn't have too many over needed details, which for what it is, it does an extremely good job. I do have to address one. Oh dear God, what is going on? What the fuck was that? Yeah, the screen can be very messy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's literally what the game is made to be. It's a bullet hell. But it does a good job of clearly identifying what each attack will do, assuming you know what the indicators are. And there is only one nitpick thing where some of the end of area bosses, whenever they get to low health, they turn to their animal form. And some of these forms can look a little silly. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. For me, honestly, it adds a lot to the charm. But for some people, it might be a little offsetting. So because of that reason, we'll give it a 4.5 out of 5, not to be biased. All right, let's talk about audio elements and sound effects and stuff. I mean, we don't want our games to sound like someone scraping along a chalkboard. And Raven Steel cleanly delivers on a well-balanced and enjoyable audio experience. Actually, a lot of the music is made by the same person who worked on One Step of Eden, which uh, has a lot of banger tracks in it. So it's a big thumbs up for me. I mean, just listen to this banger. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the, the review. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to that. But the music is very diverse and changes between loot rooms and combat rooms, which, which makes it feel very dynamic and enjoyable. And the sound effects are nice, nothing to complain about, so definitely a 5 out of 5 for me. Okay, now that we talked about general gameplay and how our senses feel about the game, let's talk about the more roguelike specific parts, starting with replayability. And honestly, I will say, this is one of the falls of the game. There's still a good amount of replayability, but there are only a handful of areas, six to be specific, and one of those areas is the final area that you always go through, and the first one can be selected if you want. So you only go through two to three randomly selected areas. And inside each of those areas, all the enemies inside are exactly the same. The only difference you might encounter is that harder difficulties, their moves change and become more diverse and, well, harder. So it doesn't give a lot of replayability randomness to the game. You just get a very basic area randomization, as well as items, of course, but it's not the most replayable in that sense. Like I said, other than the shop, the loot, and the two to three areas, depending if you select one or not, all the other randomness is basically non-existent, which is a bit of a letdown for how good the game is gameplay-wise and graphically-wise. As much as it pains me to say it, I'm going to put replayability to a solid two out of five. It's just very underwhelming. But oh boy, does it make it up in difficulty. And I'm just gonna say it, this game is hard. I got a bad feeling about this. You will die. You will die a lot, especially when you first begin. Once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad until you get to the harder difficulty, realize you're not doing enough damage, and realize you're just about to get bodied. And there's nothing you can do about it because you're not optimizing properly and it's a bullet hell. the screen will fill up very quickly with all sorts of effects and you have to properly figure out how to navigate it and you only have your dodge every 10 to 15 seconds so you got to be frugal with it and remember your hitbox is the size of a pea and their hitbox is the size of at least a watermelon if not what's bigger than watermelon <laughs> I digress. Because of this, the game makes you think really hard about what you want to do, how to maneuver, and how to properly undertake each fight. Which means not only is the game really hard to get into, but the skill ceiling is also super high. So uh, make sure you optimize, optimize, optimize. And though it's a multiplayer game, don't think bringing a friend will help you. Not only do the enemies scale, but all of a sudden all the enemies' attacks start revolving around your allies as well. So you need to properly move on top of them, move away from them, and properly maneuver around around both your allies and your enemies attack. So it's an easy five out of five on difficulty. You you will get bodied and there's nothing you can do about it until I guess you get good or you get that broken run or you play assassin rabbit. But I digress. Don't ask me which rabbit I play. Okay, so not all roguelikes have multiplayer. So this is gonna be a special bonus section that I won't put as an overall part of the review. I think the game gets much better with friends because, well, this game is a raid boss game and what's a raid boss if you're doing it yourself? Let's do this, Leroy Dragons! 
Like I said before, once you add more players, you have to properly maneuver each other and cooperate very well. And that experience is something I could highly recommend. It's multiplayer is a five out of five. Before we move to the conclusion, if you're enjoying the video, why not consider liking and subscribing and leave a comment down below if, if you agree with what I'm saying or if you completely disagree and angrily comment down there why I'm wrong and why you're right. I mean, if, that, if that's how you feel, I'll, I'll understand. I'll, I'll read it. I won't take it to heart too much. I only heard a little bit, but I digress. Conclusion. Yeah, conclusion. So, does Rabbit and Steel truly live up to all the expectations? God, absolutely. It makes for a very fun experience. If you want to experience a Bosch Rush roguelike game where you have a to mesh high skill and fun gameplay, this is the one. And I highly recommend bringing a friend or two or three, because Max is four, and experience the game that way because it just gets more fun. And you all gotta practice your communication sometime, and what better way than quick thinking and screaming at each other to defeat a boss? Sadly, the only downside of this game is its replayability, but the difficulty will keep you coming back. So I'll give Rab and Steel an easy. 4.3 out of 5? Is that how the math came out? It, we'll just round that up. Uh, we'll give it 4.5 Heavy Blade Rabbits out of 5. It's a very good game that MMO players and roguelike players can both enjoy a lot. So I recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link to the Steam page down in the description. Also, before you guys go, you guys should check out this video explaining why people like me keep playing roguelikes. I mean, almost everything feels like a roguelike these days, or it's at least being classified as one. And why, why is that? Well, click this video and find out.